welcome to Sculpture Studios. Today you're joining us for the kind of project that we really enjoy taking on here at the workshop. It's something large, theatrical, to go outside, um, going to be in a nice public space um, where people can come and see it. And this is something for Lincoln Castle here in the UK. Um, we've been approached by someone called Steph who works up at Lincoln Castle. Um, got in touch with us because there's already a dragon there in place called Lucy, and this is her. Um, and unfortunately the company that originally made Lucy aren't available to take on this second project. So Steph found us online. Aidan and Sue, mum to me, but Sue to everyone else, have already travelled up to site. Um, they've taken some measurements and taken a look at Lucy, who's currently in storage, in her nest rather. And before going out on display again um, later this year in the summer, they'd really like a, a companion for Lucy. And the idea of this project is we're going to be creating a dragon in a very similar style, not plucking ideas out of our own head, um, but really trying to create sort of a family resemblance so that it looks like it's the same breed of dragon from the same imagination. And we're going to be creating an entire head section, a neck that arches and looks as though it's going underground, two wingtips coming out of the ground, and because these are all going to be modular pieces, uh, a towel section that could be placed any, any length of distance away um, so they can really move this around and position it where they'd like it to be. Um, Aiden's visited site, got a feel for the ground, um, the pitch that the, the hill was going down at and the idea is to make this the same dragon but a more masculine one. So we're going to add some more horns, change parts of the face, give it a bit of a cheeky grin um, as that's what Steph and her team up at Lincoln Castle would really like. The majority of the form we're going to try and carve from polystyrene. There's going to be a few pieces that are a lot more intricate and a lot more detailed like all the scales on the cheek um, and uh, the horny parts around the eye. These are going to be modelled up in a clay and we're going to be taking a mould of the more intricate areas in a silicon rubber um, that we can then cast in glass fibre and stick onto the main form. Um, a lot of the sections are really big bulky pieces and these are going to have a blanket coat of glass fibre and eventually we'll cover a lot of it in a concrete render um, and this will give that kind of real gnarly rocky feel um, which will also be good and durable to go outside. The majority of our work for outdoor pieces, theme parks and public exhibitions are made from glass fibre um, and so this is really up our street and we're really looking forward to working on this one. As I said, it's the kind of work we love taking on at the studio and uh, we hope that we do Steph, Lincoln Castle and Lucy proud. I think you've joined us for a good one today, you know what I mean? Well, here we go. We've got a full-on, complete top-to-bottom project video here today, and you guys are very much welcome to come along for the ride. If this is your first ever Sculpture Studios project video, I mean, where have you been? And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. We know that you couldn't stay away and resist another banging project video like this one, and we know you're here to get your fix, so let's hope we deliver. There's plenty to be done here on this project, starting off with our polystyrene carving, whereby we're using handheld hot wires to cut the bulk of the cubist form before Aiden goes ahead with nail and wire brushes. You see a lot of things machine cut and programmed into computers nowadays, but here at the studio we like to keep things old school and have the master carvings created by hand. It's easier for us to make amendments if the client ever needs to make changes or alterations, and frankly, it's what old Aiden here loves doing best. Oh boy, look at him go! I'll catch up with you guys in a few minutes and leave you all to enjoy the polystyrene carving process. You're in safe hands.
I mean, if you're not zen down now, there's something wrong with you. Go on, Aiden, stretch it out, mate. It's now that time during the process where we're blessed with the wonder that is the secretly sourced sticky back tinfoil. If you ask any of our team where we get it from, well that's sort of the reaction you come to expect. Nobody knows. Now that the master pattern has been approved by the client, we're going over with our trusty foil here to protect the polystyrene from the resin going on the top. Should you wish to try out some of this foil, drop us an email and we may just be able to help you out a little. Simultaneously, Jess is beginning work on the dragon's eyes. She's using a silicon rubber and taking a mould of a nice smooth hemisphere, whereby she'll later be pouring two clear resin casts backed up with her hand-painted dragon's eye designs. So that we can remove the polystyrene from the inside of the fiberglass form significantly easier, we're splitting the pattern straight down the middle before we go on with any glass fibre. This is so we can lay both halves of the head down and we can use a hot wire to remove large bulks of polystyrene from the inside like this. Later on we'll utilise this polystyrene to create the dragon's neck and purely for educational purposes as well as the enjoyment factor after we've shown the lamination of the neck we can see poor old Russell having a whale of a time hacking everything out by hand trust me it's not all glitz and glamour here at all times the reasons for hollowing out the head section as well as so that we can use the polystyrene for the neck carving is so that we can install the eyes and metalwork on the inside and this will also significantly lighten the load as we're going to be lifting this by hand on site Right here, you're joining us for a little D&D. &D. Well, not D&D, &D, r and but D&D uh, &D would be very appropriate. So Ruth has, of course, created some of her magic mix. Um, we're going for a massive overall surface coverage here. Here we've done a test sample of a heavier thickness and a heavier texture. Um, if we were creating this dragon from scratch, we may continue with this across the entire form. Um, but as we're trying to replicate what we've seen on the other dragon, the one that's already existing we're trying a different approach 
The main thing for the coverage, of course, is to get rid of the fiberglass texture first, but obviously add in a bit of a, a rocky, scaly texture as well. If you can just show us what you're doing here with a finer sample, Ruth. Uh, this is our little crumpet, small crumpet. Yeah. <laughs> We're using it just to stipple the effect on here. So what you do is you, you tap it on and just drag it off. And then later we're going to dob it down a bit more so it's less spiky. Um, yeah, it just creates a nice kind of scaly, roughed up, slightly fluffy looking texture. While Aidan's away, we're going to send him a couple of photographs to see what his preference is. We may indeed use both, both this for the heavier sections and then that for the, uh, for the finer detail. But um, we try not to add too much weight to the overall form, as obviously we need to put this on the entire surface of all of the dragon pieces, the two wings, the head, the neck, and here the tail. Um, but it's also saving material as well. We don't want to be going completely overboard and adding something that's an inch thick. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, creating a couple of test samples and we'll see what Aidan's happy with um, while he's abroad. As mentioned earlier, for the more detailed sections on the dragon's head that we've currently left blank, we're going to be modelling this up in a clay, taking a thin silicon rubber mould of each section with a light fibreglass jacket, and creating a fibreglass cast that we can screw on and blend in with the main form. This is where the real model making side of the studio comes in, and it's so that we can achieve as much detail as Lucy herself currently has, rather than trying to work up from an entire blanket coat form of glass fibre. Though all of the moulds that are being made are only going to be used once, each producing just a single cast that will only fit their designated section, we think it's still worth us going down this process to achieve a finish that, regardless of how Lucy already looks, has a level of detail that we would want to see on a piece of sculpture like this. Rather than the concrete render, which was our original choice of surface material at the start of the project, instead we're using a resin mix that will really key to the fiberglass underneath. We want to ensure that this really has the longevity to last outside, and so that the team at Lincoln Castle can feature the dragon year after year. This can be painted on to create streaks, or stippled on for a gnarlier, heavier look. Here, the eyes have been cast from the rubber mould in a clear resin, and Jess has created an airbrushed artwork detailing of the eyes, which is bonded to the back of each cast. When all of the messier work is out of the way, and we know these aren't going to get dirty or knocked or damaged, these will be fixed in place in the head from the inside. For now, the entire surface of the dragon is being treated with the resin texture mix and metalwork installed to give this a bit more structure and so this can be fixed down to the ground on site. Now, here's something that we've taken upon ourselves to amend a little later in the project than we normally would have. Generally speaking, it's much easier to make amendments during the polystyrene stage, but we've reached a point here where we feel the back of the head and the horns need to be opened up a little more. Not only to make room for the next section that's going to be created to offer up to the back of the head, but also from an aesthetic point of view, and to better match the direction of Lucy's horns, which flare out a little more. This is one of those moments where we're glad we have a client that's allowed plenty of time for this project, so that we can make creative decisions that simply better the end result. 
We're cutting through the glass fiber and we're going to re-laminate this from the inside in a more open position. This is then retextured from the outside to blend everything back in. Oh, speaking of creative choices. Here you can see the laminating process with the resin and glass fibre, the same process as the head, the wings and the tail. Generally for outdoor pieces like this, we'll build up in multiple layers, whereby we add a pigment so that we can better keep track of where we've already covered. We're not anticipating for this sculpture to be touched or climbed on, as it's going to be in a roped off area to the public, but this needs to be durable nonetheless. I did mention that Russell was going to be having a hard time hacking out all of the polystyrene from the inside, and this just goes to show how much more beneficial it was cutting the head in half. <laughs> it can't make it look too easy, can it? <laughs> Starting with the grey primer, we're beginning with the artwork now. This is going to be something that's built up in theatrical layers, sprayed and airbrushed in 2K car body paints for durability outside. Today, Aiden. Ah. Well, we've um, agreed a blue, which was quite nice in terms of contrast to Lucy, where, where she's um, a kind of dark grey and maroon. So we thought, well, let's go for a complementary colour and a kind of masculine in the blue. Uh, but the client agreed to that, and we've cracked on ahead with it. There's about five or six of us lot on the whole project. Um, but the client has come back now and say, might actually prefer more of a red, punchy colour which is fine for us, it's more like a, a Welsh Dragon sort of red. So we've sprayed this out initially with an etching primer to get rid of the blue. And later on, I think I'm going to go over the whole lot with a solid gray or a white again, just so it allows the red to really punch through. Um, yeah, I think in the, in the end, it's gonna look fantastic regardless. And it's whatever the client wants, really. So it's, it's definitely worth noting that the clients didn't make this decision after seeing the artwork that we'd already created. Oh, no, no, no. This was um, a decision over the course of the weekend where blue was decided last week. We've cracked on and uh, gone over the majority of the, the forms you can see here with the blue. And uh, the power of the bee simply thought over the course of the weekend, let's go for a, a fire flame red instead to stay more in keeping with uh, with Lucy's feel. We then sent them the, the image 
images of the artwork we've already created so that they could see how far we'd come, they can see it properly in blue, and then they could make an informed decision. And uh, it was a tough one. I think they were they were definitely definitely on the ropes at one point as to whether to stick with the blue because I must admit the blue did look really good, but they're going to go with a red anyway. So the advantage is we're what we would consider to be ahead on this project. We've really cracked on over the last couple of months. If we were behind by a few weeks or they made this decision a few weeks later, it would have been much more of an issue. A, we would have finished everything a lot more so we'd have more to rectify, but we simply would have been running out of time. But um, we're ahead on the project. They've made a decision in plenty of time. So um, at the end of the day, it's what the client wants and a happy client is what, what we're here for. Yeah, sure, and I think it will look fantastic in the end anyway. And it'd be nice to see it in situ. Damn right it will. When Aidan's happy with the finished artwork, the entire surface of the dragon is then coated in a 2K lacquer. This locks all of the artwork down and just adds a bit of protection for going outside. With everything pretty much wrapped up here at the workshop, we've organised for a lorry to come and collect this from the studio, whereby it will be travelling up in convoy to escort this to site at Lincoln Castle. Steph was there to greet us on the day, and the Link Castle team were at hand to help unload and move all of the elements into position. Lucy was being prepped to come out of hibernation for her return to the inside of the castle walls. I mean, there are worse places to go and spend a day or two on site. The castle was still open to the public, so we were keeping everything under wraps as best we could, ready for the big reveal over the course of the weekend. Right, here we are Wednesday, the end of day one. So it's, uh, it's a toasty 24, 25 degrees. We're at the top of the hill, Lincoln Castle, and we've carried all of the elements of Norman the Dragon, uh, which is sort of the unofficial name at the moment, but Norman is the one that they're, they're kind of leaning towards. This is the position that Norman's head's going to be. His towel section is going to be somewhere floating around there somewhere, depending on where Lucy's towel already comes out of the wall. We've got the two wing sections to be set up here and here. But uh, Lincoln Castle have got a team of 10 guys coming tomorrow morning to position Lucy where she would normally be which the back of her neck is over there and she comes down there so there's going to be a few meters gap between her nose and Norman's as a, it's a roped off area so the public can't come any further than this or shouldn't come any further than this we should say 
but it's a great focal point as you walk into the castle on the right hand side of the grounds. It looks tiny now that he's out here in the in the open, a lot, lot bigger in the studio but everything always is. But no, productive day. We thought we'd get everything up and relatively in position. So for our part, there's not too much heavy lifting needed tomorrow. It's more just the positioning, adding the scaffold poles, making sure everything's all set up for the Lincoln Castle team to then put all the mud around um, the base to, uh, to dress everything. Before everything is dressed and the metalwork hidden by the earth, we're going through the positioning with Steph and James here, just to confirm that everything is where it should be, to best be seen from the public's point of view. We really hope this isn't the last time we work with Lincoln Castle, as there was a real warmth to the idea of more being created. We've already bounced around a couple of ideas when this project was first being discussed, and so we'll have to wait and see, time will tell. For all of the work that we take on at the studio, quite often some of the most rewarding pieces are those that are out in the public domain. Whether that's for something like a theme park or, in this case, a British landmark, something that's going to hopefully withstand the test of time and be appreciated for many years to come, much like the castle itself. On the days that we were installing, this appreciation was out in full force. There were loads of school visits walking round, enthusiasm for the return of Lucy and her new companion, and that excitement simply grew over the course of the weekend with Lincoln's Enchanted Castle event. As well as being free to the public to walk around the castle grounds, go into the prisons and on educational tours, the castle also routinely holds events throughout the year, and what a way to introduce Norman and Lucy as a duo to the city. The Enchanted Castle event featured magic, characters, creatures and craft tents, and the event was such a big hit on social media that we took a little look online to try and find anyone who managed to capture Norman. Upon our visit to Lincoln, we also saw a few familiar items dotted around the city. A couple of years ago, we were in collaboration with Lincoln County Council and their art trail, whereby we created numerous fiberglass hearts which were decorated by schools, businesses, organisations and charities, and it was great to see these in prime locations as you worked your way up towards the castle. A really big thank you must go to our client Stephanie Beecher to James Sharples and the rest of their team at Lincoln Castle for not only finding us online and approaching us with the project, but for really hitting the ground running and having the drive to kickstart everything straight away. Nowadays there always seems to be rules and procedures, documents, boxes you need to tick and permissions you need to be granted, but for this project our clients pushed everything forward for us and we really appreciate you guys making it happen. What a spectacle for the castle, for the portfolio, and here on our channel for everyone else who happens to be watching around the world. We always love hearing what you guys think of our projects and our channel, so please feel free to drop a comment below, and by all means subscribe and give us a follow on social media. A big thank you to all of our patrons who support our projects and the creation of our videos, we love having you guys on board, and if you'd like to support our family run studio, you can find our Patreon details below. However big or small, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching.